Good afternoon. Today I would like to introduce you the next pharmacology lecture, Drugs Acting on Central Nervous System, Part 4. Lecture Plan Opioid Analgesics, Non-Opioid Analgesics, Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drugs, and Antipyretic Analgesics. Let's start from Opioid Analgesics. Definitions Analgesia, or pain, is an ill-defined, unpleasant bodily sensation usually evoked by an external or internal noxious stimulus. Pain is a warning signal, primarily protective in nature, but causes discomfort and suffering, may even be unbearable and incapacitating. It is the most important symptom that brings the patient to the physician. Excessive pain may produce other effects, sinking sensation, apprehension, sweating, nausea, palpitation, rise or fall in blood pressure, tachypnea. Analgesic, a drug that selectively relieves pain by acting in the central nervous system or on peripheral pain mechanisms without significantly altering consciousness. Analgesics relieve pain as a symptom without affecting its cause. They are used when the noxious stimulus evoking the pain cannot be removed or as adjuvants to more etiological approach to pain. Classification of analgesics Opioid, narcotic, morphine-like analgesics, and non-opioid, non-narcotic, aspirin-like analgesics. Opioid, narcotic, morphine-like analgesics are subdivided into natural opium alkaloids, semi-synthetic opiates, and synthetic opiates. Let's start from natural opium alkaloids. On this picture you can see opium, which is the dark brown, resinous material obtained from poppy, Papaver somniferum capsule. In here you can see its pictures, and in here you can see, in Afghanistan, Helmand province, one of the main centers of opium production. U.S. Marines and soldiers of the Afghan National Army on an opium poppy field while patrolling the area around their base. Opium has been known from the earliest times. It is mentioned in the Ebers Papyrus, in the writings of Theophrastus and Galen. Opium eating became a social custom in China in the 18th century. Sir Turner, a pharmacist, isolated the active principle of opium in 1806 and named it morphine after the Greek god of dreams Morpheus. In the last century, a large number of semi-synthetic and synthetic compounds have been developed with morphine-like, antagonistic and mixed agonistic-antagonistic properties. Compounds that are derived from opium or are chemically related to morphine are called opiates, while all those having morphine-like action, irrespective of chemical nature, are called opioids. Accordingly, petidine, adrophins, etc. are opioids, but not opiates. Opium contain two types of alkaloids, phenantrine derivates, morphine around 10% in opium, codeine around 0.5% in opium, and tabine around 0.2% in opium, and benzoisoquinolone derivates, non-analgesic ones, noscapine around 6% in opium, and papaverine around 1% in opium. And in here you can see the general picture of phenantrine derivates, depending on what will be on the place of this radical, hydrogen or CH3, it will be as morphine or codeine. In here you can see opioid receptor transducer mechanisms. There are five different types of opioid receptors. Mu receptors is characterized by its high affinity for morphine, kappa receptors, is defined by its high affinity for ketocyclosacine and dinorphine A. Delta receptors has high affinity for leumet and kephalins, which are its endogenous ligands. Epsilon receptors, beta endorphins, and sigma receptors, GAT and hallucination action. In here you can see action ascribed to different types of opioid receptors. For example, mu receptors analgesia, respiratory depression, sedation, euphoria, meiosis, muscular rigidity, reduced GI motility, physical dependence, morphine type. 
kappa, analgesia, respiratory depression, dysphoria, psychotomimetic, meiosis, sedation, physical dependence, nalrophin type, reduced GI motility, and delta, analgesia, respiratory depression, affective behavior, reinforcing actions, reduced GI motility, proconvulsant. Opioids Natural Mediators In 1975, John Hughes and Hans Kosterlitz reported the first evidence of enkephalins. In 1976, Roger Gilman in Hypothesis Androphins. In here you can see nature of interaction of opioid ligands with the three major types of opioid receptors along with equivalent analgesic doses. Let's take some examples. Morphine is strong agonist on mu receptors, weak agonist on kappa receptors, and weak agonist on delta receptors. Nalorphine, strong antagonist on mu receptors, moderate agonist on kappa receptors, and no delta action. Pentazocene, partial agonist on mu receptors, weak antagonist on the same mu receptors, agonist with moderate action on kappa receptors, and no delta action. Butorphanol, partial weak agonist on mu receptors, strong agonist on kappa receptors. Buprenorphine, partial agonist on mu receptors, moderate action antagonist on kappa receptors. Also, these two doesn't have any kind of delta action. And also in here you can check the doses, the analgesic doses of these mentioned drugs. And please memorize naloxone and naltrexone because they are antagonists of all opioid receptors. Let's start from morphine and its pharmacological action. First of all, on central nervous system, analgesia interacting primarily through mu opioid receptors. Sedation, mood and subjective effects, respiratory center, depressing respiratory center, death in morphine poisoning is due to respiratory failure, cough center, morphine decreases cough center, temperature regulating center, depressed, and vasomotor center, depresses in high concentration. Morphine stimulates, hemoreceptor trigger zone, nausea and vomiting occur as side effects, Edinger westphal nucleus, parasympathetic preganglionic nucleus that innervates the iris sphincter muscle and the ciliary muscle, vagal center, bradycardia, central cortical areas and hippocampal, muscular rigidity and immobility is consistently manifested at high doses. Second, neuroendocrine. Gonadotropins and adrenocorticotropin levels are lowered. Cardiovascular system. Morphine causes vasodilation due to histamine release, depression of vasomotor center, direct action decreased tone of blood vessels. Gastrointestinal tract. The enteric plexus neurons and GI mucosa are rich in opioid receptors. Morphine exerts effect on GI motility as well as on fluid dynamics across GI mucosa. Direct action on intestines increases tone and segmentation but decreases propulsive movements. Tone of duodenum and colon may be increased to level of spasm. Spasm of pyloric, ileocecal and anal sphincters. Decrease in all GI secretions due to reduction in movement of water and electrolytes from mucosa to the lumen. Central action causing inattention to defecation reflex. No tolerance develops to this action. Addicts remain chronically constipated. Other smooth muscles. Biliary tract. Morphine causes spasm of sphincter odi. The intrabiliary pressure is increased several fold. Urinary bladder. Tone of both detrusors and sphincter muscle is increased leads to urinary urgency and difficulty in micturition. Uterus. Action is clinically insignificant, but may slightly prolong labor. Bronchi. Releases histamine, 
may cause bronchoconstriction in case of asthma, no consequence in normal individuals, but can be dangerous on asthmatics, and autonomic nerve system, morphine causes mild hyperglycemia due to central sympathetic stimulation, it has weak anticholinesterase action. Pharmacokinetics. The oral absorption of morphine is unreliable because of high and variable first-pass metabolism. Oral bioavailability is one-sixth to one-fourth of parenterally administered drug. About 30% is bound to plasma proteins. Distribution is wide. Concentration in liver, spleen, and kidney is higher than that in plasma. Only a small fraction enters brain rather slowly. Morphine freely crosses placenta and can affect the fetus more than the mother. It is primarily metabolized in liver by glucuronide conjugation. Morphine 6-glucuronide is an active metabolite, more potent than morphine on mu opioid receptors, which accumulates during chronic dosing and contributes to analgesia despite its restricted passage across blood-brain barrier. Another metabolite, morphine-3-glucuronide, has neuroexcitatory property. Plasma time of half-elimination of morphine averages 2-3 hours. Effect of a parenteral dose lasts for 6 hours. Elimination is almost complete in 24 hours and morphine is non-cumulative. However, small amounts persist in the body due to enterohepatic circulation. Adverse effects. First of all, side effects, sedation, mental clouding, lethargy, and other subjective effects, which may even be dysphoric in some subjects. Vomiting is occasional in recumbent patient. Constipation is common and distressing. Respiratory depression, blurring of vision, urinary retention, especially in elderly male, and other side effects. Blood pressure may fall, especially in hypovolemic patients, and if he, she walks about. Second, idiosyncrasy and allergy. Allergic reactions manifesting as urticaria, swelling of lips, occur infrequently. Anaphylactoid reaction is rare. A local reaction at injection site and generalized itching may occur due to histamine release. Third, Apnea of the newborn. This may occur when morphine is given to the mother during labor. The blood-brain barrier of the fetus is undeveloped. Morphine attains higher concentration in fetal brain than in that of mother. Naloxone 10 micrograms kilogram injected in the umbilical cord is the treatment of choice. Fourth, acute morphine poisoning. It may be accidental, suicidal, or seen in drug abusers. In the non-tolerant adult, 50 mg of morphine IM produces serious toxicity. The human lethal dose is estimated to be about 250 mg. Manifestations are extensions of the pharmacological action. Stupor or coma, lacidity, shallow and occasional breathing, cyanosis, pinpoint pupil, fall in blood pressure and shock, convulsions may be seen in few, Pulmonary edema occurs at terminal stage. Death is due to respiratory failure. Fifth, tolerance and dependence. High degree of tolerance can be developed to morphine and related opioids if the drug is used repeatedly. It is partly pharmacokinetic, enhanced rate of metabolism, but mainly pharmacodynamic, cellular tolerance. Tolerance is exhibited to most actions, but not to constipating and meiotic actions. Addicts tolerate morphine in grams. Lethal dose is markedly increased. Patients in intense pain are relatively tolerant to depressant effects. Cross-tolerance among opioids is of high degree. Morphine-tolerant subjects are partially cross-tolerant to other CNS depressants as well. Morphine produces pronounced psychological and physical dependence. Its abuse liability is rated high. Recently, the n methyl diaspartate receptors antagonists and nitric oxide synthase inhibitors have been found to block morphine tolerance and dependence in animals. Thus, the analgesic action of morphine can be dissociated from tolerance and dependence, which contribute to its abuse.
Treatment of Acute Morphine Poisoning. It consists of respiratory support. Positive pressure respiration also opposes pulmonary edema formation and maintenance of blood pressure, IV, fluids, vasoconstrictors. Gastric lavage should be done with potassium permanganate to remove unabsorbed drug. Lavage is indicated even when morphine has been injected. Being a basic drug, it is partitioned to the acid gastric juice, ionizes there and doesn't diffuse back into blood. Specific antidote, naloxone, 0.4-0.8 mg intravenously, repeated every 2-3 minutes till respiration picks up, is the specific antagonist of choice because it acts rapidly, doesn't have any agonistic action and doesn't depress respiration. Due to short duration of action, naloxone should be repeated every 1-4 hours according to the response. Opioids precautions and contraindications. Morphine is a drug of emergency, but due care has to be taken in its use. Infants and the elderly are most susceptible to respiratory depressant action. It is dangerous in patients with respiratory insufficiency. Sudden deaths have occurred. Morphine accentuates sleep apnea. Bronchial asthma, histamine releasing action. Head injury, reasons are. Retaining carbon dioxide, it increases intracranial tension, which is add to that caused by injury. Even therapeutic doses can cause marked respiratory depression. Vomiting, meiosis, and altered mentation produced by morphine interfere with assessment of progress in head injury cases. Hypotensive states and hypovolemia exaggerate fall in blood pressure due to morphine. Undiagnosed acute abdominal pain, morphine can aggravate certain conditions, but can be given after the diagnosis is established. Elderly male, chances of urinary retention. Hypothyroidism, liver and kidney disease patients are more sensitive to morphine. Unstable personalities are liable to continue with its use and become addicted. The second representative is codeine. It is methylmorphine, occurs naturally in opium, and is partly converted in the body to morphine. It is less potent than morphine, one-tenth as analgesic, also less efficacious. Is a partial agonist at mu opioid receptor with a low ceiling effect. The degree of analgesia is comparable to aspirin, 60 mg codeine, is approximately 600 mg of aspirin, can relieve mild to moderate pain only. However, codeine is more selective cough suppressant, one-third as potent as morphine, subanalgesic doses, 10-30 mg suppress cough. So we discussed natural opium alkaloids, now we came to the point of semi-synthetic opiates. These are Diacetylmorphine or heroin, folcodeine, ethylmorphine. Folcodeine and ethylmorphine. They have codeine like properties and have been used mainly as antitussive, claimed to be less constipating. Next one heroin, diamorphine, diacetylmorphine. It is about three times more potent than morphine, more lipid soluble. Therefore, enters the brain more rapidly, but duration of action is similar. It is considered to be more euphoriant, especially on IV injection, and highly addicting. Because of its high potency, it has been favored in illicit drug trafficking. The sedative, emetic, and hypotensive actions are said to be less prominent. However, it has no outstanding therapeutic advantage over morphine, and has been banned in most countries except UK. And synthetic opiates, for example, petidine or mepiridine, fentanyl, metadone, dextropropoxifen, and tramadol. Petidine or mepiridine. Petidine was synthesized as an atropine substitute in 1939 and has some actions like it. Though chemically unrelated to morphine, it interacts with mu opioid receptors 
and its actions are blocked by naloxone. Important differences in comparison to morphine are dose to dose one tenth in analgesic potency. However, analgesic efficiency approaches near to morphine and is greater than codeine. After IM injection, the onset of action is more rapid, but duration is shorter, 2-3 hours. It doesn't effectively suppress cough. Spasmodic action on smooth muscles is less marked. Meiosis, constipation and urinary retention are less prominent. It is equally sedative and euphoriant, has similar abuse potential. The degree of respiratory depression seen at equianalgesic doses is equivalent to that with morphine. Tachycardia, due to antimuscarinic action, occurs instead of bradycardia. It causes less histamine release and is safer in asthmatics. It has local anesthetic action. Corneal anesthesia is seen after systemic doses. It is well absorbed orally. Parenteral activity ratio is higher, one-third to one-second. Petidine is nearly completely metabolized in liver. The plasma time of half-elimination of petidine is 2-3 hours. Acidification of urine increases excretion of unchanged petidine. Uses of petidine Petidine is primarily used as an analgesic, substitute of morphine, and in pre-anesthetic medication, but not for cough or diarrhea. It has also been used to control shivering during recovery from anesthesia or that attending IV infusions. Conventional antihistaminic, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and corticosteroids augment this effect of petidine. Potential adverse effects due to accumulation of norpetidine limit its utility in patients who require repeated dosing. It is the preferred opioid analgesic during labor because at equianalgesic doses, neonatal respiratory depression is less marked, but still significant. Fentanyl, a petidine congener, 80 to 100 times more potent than morphine, both in analgesia and respiratory depression. In analgesic doses, it produces few cardiovascular effects. Cardiac contractility and heart rate are only marginally reduced, and it has less propensity to release histamine. Because of high lipid solubility, it enters brain rapidly and produces peak analgesia in 5 minutes after IV injection. The duration of action is short, starts wearing off after 30-40 minutes due to redistribution, while elimination time of half elimination is 4 hours. In the injectable form, it is almost exclusively used in anesthesia. Transdermal fentanyl has become available for use in cancer, terminal illness, or other types of chronic pain for patients requiring opioid analgesia. Buccal use is possible, but not oral. Tramadol. This centrally acting analgesic is an atypical opioid which relieves pain by opioid as well as additional mechanisms. Its affinity for mu opioid receptor is low, while that for kappa and delta is very low. Unlike other opioids, it inhibits reuptake of noradrenaline and 5-HT, increases 5-HT release, and thus activates monoaminergic spinal inhibition of pain. Its analgesic action is only partially reversed by the opioid antagonist, naloxone. Injected IV 100 mg of tramadol is equianalgesic to 10 mg IM of morphine. Oral bioavailability of tramadol is good. Oral to parenteral dose ratio is 1.4. The time of half elimination is 5-6 hours and effects last for 4-6 hours. Tramadol causes less respiratory depression, sedation, constipation, urinary retention and rise in intrabiliary pressure than morphine. It is well tolerated. Side effects are dizziness, nausea, sleepness, dry mouth, sweating and lowering of seizure threshold. Hemodynamic effects are minimal. Tramadol should not be given to patients taking selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor therapy because of risk of serotonin syndrome. Tramadol is indicated for mild to moderate short-lasting pain due to diagnostic procedures, 
injury, surgery, etc., as well as for chronic pain, including cancer pain, but is not effective in severe pain. Little tendency to dose escalation by chronic users is seen and abuse potential is low. Uses of opioid analgesics As analgesic, pre-anesthetic medication, balanced anesthesia and surgical analgesia, relief of anxiety and apprehension, acute left ventricular failure, cardiac asthma, cough and diarrhea. And now we came to the point of complex action, opioids and opioid antagonists. There are three groups. First one, agonists antagonists, PAPA analgesics, nalorfine, pentazocin and butorphanol. Second, partial or weak mu agonist plus kappa antagonist, buprenorphine. And third, pure antagonists, naloxone, naltrexone, nalmefine. Let's start from the first, agonist antagonist, kappa analgesics. Pentazocin. It is the first agonist antagonist to be used as an analgesic. It has weak mu antagonistic and more marked kappa agonistic actions. The profile of action is similar to morphine. Important differences are analgesia caused by pentazocin is primarily spinal and has a different character than that caused by morphine. Parenterally 30 mg of pentazocin, around 10 mg of morphine. But ceiling effect is lower. At higher doses, proportionate increase in analgesia doesn't occur. Sedation and respiratory depression is one-third to one-second of morphine at lower doses and has a lower ceiling, doesn't increase much beyond 60 mg dose. Tachycardia and rising blood pressure are produced at higher doses due to sympathetic stimulation. This may increase cardiac work, better avoided in coronary ischemia and myocardial infarction. Biliary spasm and constipation are less severe. Vomiting is less frequent. Other side effects are sweating and lightheadedness. Subjective effects are pleasurable, morphine-like, at lower doses recognized by post addicts as an opiate. However, as dose is increased, these become unpleasant, nalorphine-like at more than 60 mg IM, and psychotomimetic effects, kappa and sigma-mediated appear. Butorphanol. It is kappa analgesic, similar to but more potent than pentazocin. Butorphanol 2 mg is around 30 mg of pentazocin. Likewise, analgesia and respiratory depression have a lower ceiling than morphine. Sedation, nausea, cardiac stimulation and other side effects are similar to pentazocin, but subjective effects are less dysphoric. Psychotomimetic effects are not prominent. It is a weaker sigma agonist at higher doses. Blood pressure is not increased. Next one, partial weak mu agonist plus kappa antagonist, buprenorphine. It is a synthetic tabine congener, highly lipid soluble mu analgesic that is 25 times more potent than morphine, but with lower intrinsic activity and sealing effect. The onset of action is slower and duration longer. After a single dose, analgesia lasts for 6-8 hours, but with repeated dosing, Duration of action increases to 24 hours due to accumulation in tissues. Certain other effects last still longer. Uses Buprenorphine is indicated for long-lasting painful conditions requiring an opioid analgesic, for example cancer pain. It has also been recommended for premedication, post-operative pain, in myocardial infarction and in the treatment of morphine dependence. And third, pure antagonist, naloxone. It is an allylnor oxymorphone and a competitive antagonist on all types of opioid receptors. However, it blocks mu receptors at much lower doses than those needed to block kappa or delta receptors. It is devoid of any kind of agonistic activity even at high doses, 20 times mu blocking dose. 
No subjective or autonomic effects are produced in individuals who have not received an opioid. No physical, psychological dependence or abstinence syndrome has been observed. Injected intravenously 0.4-0.8 mg, it promptly antagonizes all actions of morphine. Analgesia is gone, respiration is not only normalized but stimulated, probably due to sudden sensitization of respiratory center to the retained carbon dioxide, or it may be a manifestation of acute withdrawal. Pupils dilate. However, sedation is less completely reversed. And the next part of our lecture is non-opioid analgesics and antipyretic analgesics. Non-opioid analgesics. All drugs grouped in this class have analgesic, antipyretic and anti-inflammatory actions in different measures. In contrast to morphine, they do not depress central nervous system, do not produce physical dependence, have no abuse liability and are weaker analgesics, except for inflammatory pain. They are also called non-narcotic, non-opioid or aspirin-like analgesics. They act primarily on peripheral pain mechanisms, but also in the CNS to raise pain threshold. They are more commonly employed and many are over-the-counter drugs. Willow bark, Salix alba, had been used for many centuries due to salicylic acid, which was prepared by hydrolysis of the beetroglycoside obtained from this plant. Sodium salicylate was used for fever and pain. Its great success led to the introduction of acetyl salicylic acid in 1899. Phenacetin and antipyrine were produced at the same time. The term non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug was coined to designate such drugs. A host of compounds have been added since then and cyclooxygenase COX inhibition is recognized to be their most important mechanism of action. Subsequently, some selective COX2 inhibitors, for example salicoxib, have been added. In 1971, Wayne and co-workers discovered that aspirin and some NSAIDs block prostaglandin generation and thromboxane A2, which are produced from arachidonic acid by the enzyme cyclooxygenase, which exists in constitutive COX1 and inducible COX2 isoforms. The former serves physiological housekeeping functions, while the latter, COX2, normally present in a minute quantities, and is induced by cytokines and other signal molecules at the site of inflammation. However, COX2 is constitutively present at some sites in brain, in juxtaglomeral cells and in the fetus. It may serve physiological role at these sites. Most NSAIDs inhibit COX1 and COX2 non-selectively, but now some selective COX2 inhibitors have been produced. COX inhibition Aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase irreversibly by acetylating one of its serine residues. Return of cyclooxygenase activity depends on the synthesis of fresh enzymes. Other NSAIDs are competitive and reversible inhibitors of COX. Return of activity depends on their dissociation from the enzyme, which in turn is governed by the pharmacokinetic characteristics of the drug. On this slide you can see that arachidonic acid, with the help of cyclooxygenase, produces endoperoxides, PGG2, PGH2. They are going in two ways, in first with the help of thromboxane synthetase production of thromboxane A2, and in second with the help of prostacycline synthetase the formation of prostacycline PGI2. They, after that, are producing thromboxane B2 and 6-keto-PGF1-alpha. And on this slide you can see a cosanoise ways of synthesis in more details. Classification of non-opioid analgesics. They are classified into four groups. Non-selective COX inhibitors, traditional NSAIDs, preferential COX2 inhibitors, selective COX2 inhibitors, and analgesic antipyretics with poor anti-inflammatory action. Let's tap on each of them. 
First, non-selective COX inhibitors are subclassified into solid salates, for example, aspirin, propionic acid derivates, for example, ibuprofen, naproxen, ketoprofen, flurbiprofen, phenamate, methenamic acid, enolic acid derivates, pyroxicam, tenoxicam, acetic acid derivates, ketorolac, indometacin, nabumetone, and pyrozolone derivates, phenylbutazone, oxyphenbutazone. The second preferential COX2 inhibitors are nimisulide, diclofenac, aciclofenac, meloxicam, etodolac. Selective COX2 inhibitors, celecoxib, etoricoxib, parecoxib. And analgesic antipyretics with poor anti-inflammatory action are also subdivided into paraaminophenol derivate, paracetamol or acetaminophen, pyrozolone derivates, metamizole and propifenazone, and benzoxazine derivate, nefopam. Actions of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Analgesia, antipyresis, anti-inflammatory, dysmenorrhea, antiplatelet aggregatory, ductus arteriosus closure, gastric mucosal damage, renal effects, liver damage, anaphylactic reactions. Let's start from non-selective COX inhibitors, solid salates, aspirin, acetylsalicylic acid. Aspirin. It is rapidly converted in body to salicylic acid, which is responsible for most of the action. It provides analgesic, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory, and antiplatelet aggregatory in small doses actions. It is a weaker analgesic than morphine type. Aspirin 600 mg is around 60 mg of codeine. However, it relieves inflammatory, tissue injury related, connective tissue and integumental pain, mainly due to obtaining of peripheral pain receptors and preventing prostaglandin-mediated sensitization on nerve endings, but is relatively ineffective in severe visceral pain. No sedation, subjective effects, tolerance or physical dependence. Aspirin resets the hypothalamic thermostat and rapidly reduces fever by promoting heat loss, sweating, cutaneous vasodilation, but does not decrease heat production. Anti-inflammatory action is exerted at high doses, 3-6 grams each day or 100 mg each kilogram a day. Signs of inflammation like pain, tenderness, also sweating, vasodilation and leukocyte infiltration are suppressed. In addition to cyclooxygenase inhibition, quenching of free radicals may contribute to its anti-inflammatory action. Metabolic effects. There are significant only at anti-inflammatory doses. Cellular metabolism is increased, especially in skeletal muscles. Due to uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation, which increases heat production, this leads to increasing utilization of glucose, so blood sugar may decrease, especially in diabetics, and liver glycogen is depleted. However, hyperglycemia often occurs at toxic doses due to central sympathetic stimulation, which leads to release of adrenaline and corticosteroids. Chronic use of large doses cause negative N2 balance by increasing conversion of protein to carbohydrate. Plasma-free fatty acids and cholesterol levels are reduced. Respiration. The effects are dose-dependent. At anti-inflammatory doses, respiration is stimulated by peripheral as well as central actions. Hyperventilation is prominent in salicylate poisoning. Further rise in salicylate level causes respiratory depression. Death is due to respiratory failure. Acid-base and electrolyte balance. Usual analgesic dose, 0.3 to 1 gram, have partially no effect. Anti-inflammatory doses produce significant changes in the acid-base and electrolyte composition of body fluids. Initially, respiratory stimulation predominates and tends to wash out carbon dioxide, despite increasing production leads to respiratory alkalosis, which is compensated by increased renal excretion of hydrocarbonates, 
which accompanying sodium and potassium and water. Most adults treated with 4-5 grams each day stay in state of compensated respiratory alkalosis. Still higher doses cause respiratory depression with carbon dioxide retention, while excess carbon dioxide production continues, that leads to respiratory acidosis. These cause uncompensated metabolic acidosis, since plasma hydrocarbonase is already low. Dehydration occurs in poisoning due to increased water loss in urine to accompany sodium and potassium and hydrocarbonates, increased sweating and hyperventilation. Cardiovascular system. There is no direct action on heart or blood vessels in therapeutic doses. Large doses increase cardiac output to meet the increased oxygen demand and cause direct vasodilation. Toxic doses depress vasomotor center. Blood pressure may fall. Gastrointestinal tract. Aspirin and released salicylic acid irritate gastric mucosa that cause epigastric distress, nausea and vomiting. Aspirin remains unionized and diffusible in the acid gastric juice, but on entering the mucosal cell it ionizes and becomes indiffusible. This ion trapping in the gastric mucosal cell enhances gastric toxicity, which cause focal necrosis, leading to erosive gastritis and hemorrhages. The occult blood loss in stools is increased by even a single tablet of aspirin. Blood loss average 5 ml each day at anti-inflammatory doses. Hematemesis occurs occasionally, maybe idiosyncratic reaction. Soluble aspirin tablets containing calcium carbonate and citric acid and other buffered preparations are less liable to cause gastric irritation, but incidence of ulceration and bleeding is not significantly lower. Urate excretion. Dose-related effect is seen. Less than 2 grams a day, urate retention and antagonism of all other uricosuric drugs. 2 to 5 grams a day, variable effects, often no change. More than 5 grams a day, increased urate excretion. But aspirin is not suitable for use in chronic gout. Blood, in small doses irreversibly inhibits thromboxane A2 synthesis by platelets. Uses of aspirin. As analgesic, Analgesic dose 0.3 till 0.6, 6, 8 hourly. Analgesic effect of aspirin is maximal at 1 gram single dose. Also, it is used as antipyretic in acute rheumatic fever in the dose from 4 to 5 grams or 75 to 100 milligrams each kilogram day. Serum salicylate concentration in 15 to 30 mg deciliter brings about marked symptomatic relief in 1-3 days. Dose reduction may be started after 4-7 days and maintenance doses 50 mg each kilogram day are continued for 2-3 weeks or till signs of active disease persists. Also, it is used in rheumatoid arthritis in the dose from 3 to 5 grams each day, in osteoarthritis, in post-myocardial infarction and post-stroke patients, dose from 60 to 100 mg each day. Adverse effects. Side effects. Analgesic dose from 0.3 to 1 gram a day are nausea, vomiting, epigastric distress, increased occult blood loss in stools, hypersensitivity and idiosyncrasy. Reaction include rashes, fixed drug eruption, urticaria, rhinorrhea, angioedema, asthma and anaphylactoid reaction. Profuse gastric bleeding occurs in rare instances. Acute salicylate poisoning. Fatal dose in adults is estimated to be from 10 to 30 grams, but is considerably lower in children. Serious toxicity is seen at serum salicylate levels more than 50 mg deciliter. Treatment. Symptomatic and supportive. Blood transfusion and vitamin K should be given if bleeding occurs. Choice of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Efficacy differences among different non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are minor. 
They differ quantitatively among themselves in production of different side effects, and there are large inter-individual differences. No single drug is superior to all others for every patient. Choice of drug is inescapable. Some subjects feel better on a particular drug, but not on a closely related one. Some guidelines are mild to moderate pain with little inflammation, paracetamol or low-dose ibuprofen, postoperative or similar acute but short-lasting pain, paracetamol or propionic acid derivate, diclofenac or nimesulide, acute muscle skeletal osteoarthritic injury associated pain, paracetamol or propionic acid derivate, diclofenac, exacerbation of rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, acute gout, acute rheumatic fever, naproxen, pyroxicam, indomethacin, high-dose aspirin, gastric intolerance to traditional NSAIDs or predisposed patients, a selective COX2 inhibitor or paracetamol, patients who are dependent on NSAIDs and have developed peptic ulcer must receive concurrent proton pump inhibitor. Patients with history of asthma or anaphylactoid reaction to aspirin or other NSAIDs, nimesulide, COX2 inhibitors. Patients with hypertension or other risk factor for heart attack, stroke, avoid selective COX2 inhibitor. A propionic acid derivate or aspirin may be used at the lowest dose for the shortest period. Pediatric patients, only paracetamol, ibuprofen, and naproxen have been adequately evaluated in children, should be preferred in them due to the risk of RACE syndrome, aspirin should be avoided. Elderly patients, use a lower dose of the chosen NSAID. Fast-acting drug formulation is suitable for fever, headache, and other short-lasting pain, while longer-acting drugs, sustained-release drugs, are appropriate for chronic arthritic pain. Pregnancy, paracetamol is the safest, lower dose aspirin is probably the second best. Hypertensive, diabetic, ischemic heart disease, epileptic and other patients receiving long-term regular medication, possibly of drug interaction with NSAIDs should be considered. Now we came to the point of the next group, which is propionic acid derivates. Ibuprofen from 0.4 to 0.6 or 5-10 mg each kilogram three times a day. Introduced in 1969 as the better tolerated alternative to aspirin, it has been rated as the safest traditional NSAID. 0.4 ibuprofen more efficacious than 0.65 aspirin plus 0.06 codeine. Naproxen. 0.75 starting, followed by 0.28 each 8 hours. Also ketoprofen and flurbiprofen. Phenomates, antronilic acid derivate, mephenamic acid. Time of half elimination is 2-4 hours. The dose 0.2 to 0.5 grams, 3 times a day. Enolic acid derivates, oxycams, pyroxicam, Long-acting drug, time of half elimination nearly 2 days, 20 mg twice daily. And tenoxicam also is present in this group. Acetic acid derivates, ketorolac, time of half elimination is 5-7 hours, 10-20 mg every 6 hours. Rated superior than 0.65 of aspirin, 0.6 paracetamol and 0.4 ibuprofen. Indomethacin, time of half elimination from 2 to 5 hours. The dose, from 25 to 50 mg, from 2 to 4 times a day. And nabumetone, time of half elimination 24 hours, 500 mg once daily. And pyrazolone derivates, phenylbutazone, metamizole sodium, and oxyphenbutazone. The next group is preferential COX2 inhibitors. These are nimesulide, time of half elimination is 2 to 5 hours, dose 100 mg twice daily. Diclofenac, time of half elimination is approximately 2 hours, dose 50 mg 3 times a day, 
after that twice a day. Acyclofenac, dose 100 mg twice daily. Meloxicam, plasma time of half elimination 15 to 20 hours, dose from 7.5 till 15 mg once daily. Etodolac, time of half elimination is approximately 7 hours, dose from 200 to 400 mg twice daily or 3 times in a day. And selective COX2 inhibitors, Celecoxib, time of half elimination is 10 hours, dose from 100 to 200 mg twice daily. Etoricoxib, time of half elimination is approximately 24 hours, dose from 60 to 120 mg once a day. And Paracoxib, dose 40 mg oral IM IV repeated after 6-12 hours. And the last, analgesics, antipyretics with poor anti-inflammatory action. As I mentioned before, they are also subdivided into paraaminophenol derivate, paracetamol or acetaminophen, pyrazolone derivates, metamizole and propifenazone, and benzoxazocine derivates, nefopam. Let's start from paracetamol, acetaminophen. Actions. Raises pain threshold but has negligible anti-inflammatory action. Analgesic action of aspirin and paracetamol is additive. Paracetamol is a good and promptly acting antipyretic. More active on COX in the brain. Doesn't stimulate respiration or affect acid-base balance. Doesn't increase cellular metabolism. Has no effect on CVS. Gastric irritation is insignificant. Mucosal erosion and bleeding occur rarely only in overdose, doesn't affect platelet function or clotting factors, and is not uricosuric. Plasma time of half elimination is 2-3 hours. Effects after oral dose last for 3-5 hours. Even taking one or two more tablets than recommended can cause serious liver damage. Paracetamol overdose is one of the leading causes of liver failure. Acute paracetamol poisoning. It occurs especially in small children who have low hepatic glucuronide conjugating ability. If a large dose, more than 150 mg kg or 10 g in an adult, is taken, serious toxicity can occur. Fatality is common with more than 250 mg each kg. Treatment. If the patient is brought early, vomiting should be induced or gastric lavage done. Activated charcoal is given orally or through the tube to prevent further absorption. Other supportive measures as needed should be taken. Specific antidote. N-acetylcysteine 150 mg each kilogram should be infused IV over 15 minutes, followed by the same dose IV over the next 20 hours. Alternatively, 75 mg kg may be given orally every 4-6 hours for 2-3 days. It replenishes the glutathione stores of liver and prevents binding of the toxic metabolite to other cellular constituents. Uses of Paracetamol Paracetamol is one of the most commonly used over-the-counter analgesic for headache, mild migraine, musculoskeletal pain, dysmenorrhea, etc but is relatively ineffective when inflammation is prominent, as in rheumatoid arthritis. Paracetamol is recommended as first-choice analgesic for osteoarthritis. It is one of the best drugs to be used as antipyretic, especially in children. No risk of Reyes syndrome. And the last part of our lecture is examples of MCQs. A patient with hip fracture was prescribed a narcotic analgesic. Its anesthetic action is determined by interaction with the following receptors. This is very easy MCQ and the only thing which you must remember in this is that narcotic analgesics or opioids are acting on opiate receptors. A patient with acute morphine poisoning was delivered to a hospital. What specific narcotic antagonist should be chosen in this case? As we talked before, we should use some kind of drug which will be antagonist to all opioid receptors. So, the drug is naloxone. 
A female patient consulted a doctor about pain and limited movements in the knee joints. Which of the following non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs should be administered, taking into consideration that the patient has a history of chronic gastroduodenitis? So we need to choose some kind of drug which will be the safest in this kind of case. So the answer will be Celecoxib, as it is selective COX2 inhibitor. A patient who had myocardial infarction was administered 75 mg of acetylsalicylic acid in a day. What is the purpose of this administration? As you remember, as I mentioned before, that low doses of aspirin are causing antiplatelet anti-aggregative properties, so the correct answer will be reduction of thrombocyte aggregation. Signs of gastropathy develop in the patient with rheumatoid arthritis who was treated with indomethacin. With what activity of the drug can this complication be connected? This is also very easy, as indomethacin is one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Of course, the answer will be anti-cyclooxygenase activity. A 24-year-old woman attempts suicide by ingesting 50 acetaminophen tablets. She is rushed to the emergency department. Which of the following treatments would the attending physician most likely order? So, in this case, we are searching for the antagonist of acetaminophen or paracetamol. As you remember, it is an acetylcysteine. A former drug abuser visits his physician to ask for pain medication for a legitimate back pain. The physician takes the history of drug abuse into account. Which of the following medications has the greatest potential for abuse? So, in this MCQ, you must remember the responsibility of each type of opioid receptors and the functions which are provided. In this case, we're talking about former drug abuser and the idea of euphoria. So, from all these kind of drugs which are mentioned, we must find the drug which is maximum agonist on mu receptors, which are responsible for euphoria. So, the answer will be meperidine. Thank you for the attention.